Okay, I thought while we're at it, I would go ahead and show you guys how to employ a grid on these guys. Um, the grids are applied to the data frames themselves, the measured grids with the values. Um, so we're going to have to do this twice, once for each data frame. I removed the extra data layers. And let's start by lining these things up exactly. Um, one easy way to do it is just to use a grid. You can just click up here and it, it drops a, a guideline. It'll, it should snap to uh, the edge of one of them, and then I drag the other one out of the way, and it should snap as it gets close. And that's going to force them to align. Uh, why can't I get rid of these? Clear guy. Okay. Clear all guys. Thank you. All right. So let's get a grid on there. Let's activate this top one. Notice the little dashed line. Um, right click into the properties. There's a grid tab here. We can add a new grid. A graticule is for lat longs. It measures meridians and parallels. We don't want that. We want a measured grid that's going to show us our state plane coordinate system. So projected, uh, projected coordinate systems go on a measured grid. Reference grid refers to those kind of A3 kind of grids. So next, um, I'm just going to go ahead and leave this the way it is, um, except for our axes. A thousand feet is a nice division, but we want to make sure they're square, so let's put 1,000 feet um, for the y-axis as well. Um, I'm just going to go ahead and plow through here. We can come back and change anything that we don't like. Uh, let's see here. So let's apply that. Yeah, so it employed, we can tell it not to have these little grid lines, but it's kind of a neat way for us to be able to demonstrate um, you know, kind of like a puzzle. I can compare this cell to this cell. It might give us uh, an easier way to change or to look at the land use change over time. Um, but I don't think we want to have the grid uh, labeled in between. Let's go in and fix that. I'm pretty sure it's in the properties. Yeah, and I think the label's here. So we're going to label the top and the left. How's that sound? And we'll leave the right side and the bottom clean. Um, you can go ahead and do it however you want. Um, if you want to just take off the bottom, that's fine too. So hit OK and apply that. And that's what we have to work with. I think that looks nice. You can go ahead and um, grid the right side if you want. Um, OK, so then the idea would be to activate this one. And maybe you don't even have to activate it. I just do it out of habit. Go into the properties and add a new grid. And just do the same thing. Measured grid. Oopsie, we don't want 900 feet, we want 1,000 feet in there. Next, next, and we can finish up. Come back in if we want to. Uh, properties. Here, let's not label the top or the right. And apply that and see how it looks. So, um, maybe there's absolutely no reason not to have the right side. <laughs> I don't know what I was thinking. Um, we could set a grid here and we could shrink these in if we want to have some kind of legend in here. Um, yeah, do it however you see fit. But the key is because we used a, a grid to line these up or a guideline, I should say, to line these up, these should be perfect. They don't look like they are, which is a little bit frustrating. And maybe I just need to go in with a little bit more precision and set my guide so that these tick marks are directly across from each other. Um, but at this point, we'd need to add the coordinate system that defines these values on here and put some units, but these can act as a scale bar for us. We've got nice uh, round numbers and even divisions of feet, so a thousand feet per, uh, per value here, and we can just put the state plane coordinate system units feet down here to inform this a brief title, and uh, that's a demonstration of correct georeferencing. So if you have any questions, let me know.